We've seen that the presence of an electron in an atom can be described by a wave function. The wave function is a description of where the electron can be within an atom. So the form of these wave functions are very important as they define the regions where the electron can be close to the nucleus. The shape of these allowed wave functions is defined by the allowed values of the quantum numbers. We found three quantum numbers, n, l, and ml. So the allowed values for these quantum numbers defines the shape of these wave functions, or orbitals. So the orbital shape is defined by the allowed values of the quantum numbers. So let's have a closer look at the nature of these quantum numbers. The first quantum number is called the principal quantum number, n. Its values are anywhere between 1 and infinity, as long as it is an integer. Now each orbital is labeled with a principal quantum number n. So one index is enough to describe the orbital. The second quantum number is called the orbital angular momentum, L. Now L, unlike n, the values are restricted by whatever n is. What does that mean? In this case, the allowed values for L are 0 in integer steps up to the value n minus 1. So the values of L are restricted by whatever n is. For instance, if n equals 2, the allowed values for L are 0 and 1, because n minus 1 equals 1. That is the maximum value of L. This also means that there are a number of allowed values for L for each given n. In this case, n is the number of allowed values of L. When n equals 2, you find two allowed values for L, 0 and 1. The third quantum number is called the magnetic quantum number. Now, like L, its values are restricted. In this case, the values run from minus L to L. So for each given L, you find a number of ML quantum numbers. For instance, if L equals 1, you find minus 1, 0, and 1 for ML. This is a total of three values. The total number of allowed ML values depends on L. There are two L plus one allowed values for ML for each L. So when L is one, two times one plus one equals three allowed values for ML. Now let's put this into practice. Now let's look at what does this mean for the shape of the orbitals. The simplest solution of the wave function are the solutions that have L equals zero. These are called the S orbitals. Now if we plot the square modulus of those wave functions, which is a measure of the probability of finding the electron close to the nucleus, we find shapes like this. And these shapes we call the orbital shapes. If n equals 1, we are talking about the 1s orbital. The quantum numbers are n equals 1, l equals 0, and ml equals 0. This is the simplest wave function. It has no wave properties on the spherical surface S. That means it's spherically symmetric. When n equals 2, and l equals 0, and ml equals 0, we talk about the 2s orbital. Like the 1s orbital, the 2s orbital is also spherically symmetric. For each n, there's only one s orbital. There's one 1s one orbital, there's one 2s orbital, there's one 3s orbital, and so forth. The next simplest form of the wave function are those with L equals 1. And these wave functions are called p orbitals. The square modulus of the wave function is plotted right here. We see different shapes. No longer is the wave function spherically symmetric. 
In fact, it has wave properties on the spherical surface. The shapes look like dumbbells, and the dumbbells are oriented along the coordinates x, y, and z. We also see several different ones. As it turns out, when L equals 1, ML can have the values minus 1, 0, and 1, which is 3. There are three different values for ML, which corresponds to three allowed orbitals. So there are three p orbitals, in this case, two p orbitals. But there's also three 3p three orbitals, three 4p orbitals, and so forth. Now, the next in line are the d orbitals. And the d orbitals are defined by L equals 2. If you look at the square modulus of the wave function, you find shapes like this. Much more complicated, because there's more wave properties on the spherical surface. There are a total of 5, because 2L plus 1 equals 5 in this case. 2 times 2 plus 1 equals 5. There are 5 d orbitals, in this case, 5 3d orbitals. But there are also 5 4d orbitals, and so forth. So here's what we found. We've seen that the principal quantum number is n. And when n equals 1, we have l is 0 and ml equals 0 too. This is the 1s orbital. There's only one of it. When n equals 2, there are two possible values for l, namely 0 and 1. When l is 0, ml is also 0. This is the 2s orbital, of which there's only one. But when l equals 1, there are three allowed values for ml, minus 1, 0, and 1. These are the p orbitals, the 2p orbitals. There are three of them. Next, when n equals 3, there are three possible values for L, namely 0, 1, and 2. Now, when L is 0, ML is 0, 2. This is the 3s orbital, of which there is 1. When L equals 1, again, we deal with the p orbitals. There's three of them. And finally, when L equals 2, there are five allowed values for ML. Minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, and 2. There are five d orbitals. Here, the orbitals are the three d orbitals. So this is a list of the first few orbitals, the first possible solutions of the wave function, which define the orbital shapes, the locations near the nucleus where the electron is most likely to be found.